Hallelujah! Amen. You may be seated. Yeah, I felt that was the, the right time to do that right there. Come on. Plus, that's a big blessing to try to fit in at the end of the service, you know? Spirit of long windedness catches me. We might have to shorten our blessing. And we, you know, we don't want to do that. When I was just praying for you guys and I was writing that out, and uh, I said, wow, Lord, I said, this is, this is kind of long and, you know, just, you know, and then I kept reading through it going, well, I wonder what I could cut out, what I could omit, how I could edit it down. And I couldn't find anything that I was willing to allow you to do without. I couldn't find anything in there that I was willing to say, you know what, we can just put this on the shelf and come back to that later. Everything was worth contending for and receiving and the blessing of the Lord. Amen? And so I just believe the Holy Spirit is, is, is ministering that to us. And um, thank you, Lord. And uh, I think I just got the text that video's back up too. Listen, the devil's tried to bring out all the weapons this week. Bless God. Hallelujah. And uh, even took down our video system. And, uh, you know, the nations of the earth start responding. And then all of a sudden, he's going to try to bring technical difficulties. But thank God for a Phillips screwdriver. And uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. And Clayton and Dee and Josh and Gio and, and, and Jacob and everybody back there. And, and it was interesting. I really feel like the blessing of the Lord at that time was right. Because as soon as we got, like, into the second part of the blessing, I felt an icy hot hand come on, the, like, the lower left portion of my back. And, um, and so, you know, I, I just, uh, I receive that in Jesus name. Amen. You know, it's, um, it's interesting, you know, Malik in uh, Monday I was praying and, uh, you know, I couldn't walk or anything like that this past Monday. And, uh, and it was, it was pretty sad to see. I was like, I, I text, Je oh, well, I won't say that, but, uh, I said, I mean, I feel like a certain minister we know who's also bent over, uh, and trying to walk and, um, I couldn't get any help anywhere. And, um, uh, and Rachel, couldn't, she was able to help me a lot throughout the week. But Monday, it was tough. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he just said real quickly, Amalekites. I said, wow, Amalekites. And I remembered a few weeks earlier when we had gotten that dream from that pastor in Auburn about this, this attack that would try to come against the body to cause it to become weak and weary. The Lord spoke to me about Exodus 17 when Moses sent Joshua to fight the Amalekites and as long as Moses could keep his hands up, the Israelites were victorious in battle, but at one point his hands got heavy in what he was called to carry, and he needed Aaron and Ur to come alongside of him in this posture of intercession and brotherly support. How many of you know it's how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity? It's like oil poured on the head running down the beard. You got to keep a little beard just for the oil. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember it. Here it was two weeks later, and those pesky Amalekites had shown up again. And so it's interesting, in Deuteronomy chapter 25, 17 through 19, it talks about the Amalekites were a backbiting people. They attack from behind when you were tired, weak, or weary to pick off stragglers. And, and let me just ask you, has anybody else had back trouble? Because if so, I don't want to overlook it. Well, let's just go after this. I'm going to invite Jill up. Jill's got, Jill had an audible word from the Lord. I feel like we're supposed to release this to pray into that. And then I'm just going to give you a real short message in the name of Jesus. I got a lot to say, but I always do. You know, you know, living waters come out of the innermost being, and as you can see, I've got plenty to say. Hallelujah. Come on up here, Jill. Let's thank the Lord for Jill Roberts. Tell us what you heard, and let's pray into it. Yeah, I can't remember if it was Wednesday morning or Tuesday morning, but anyway, as I was waking up, um, I audibly heard the word... Um, Botin, and I knew when I heard it that it was spelt B-O-T-I-N, but I didn't know the word. I never heard it before, and so I looked it up and the meaning of it, and it said to plunder, um, to plunder, to pillage. Um, pillage was a war term Come on. that meant at the end of a season of war, you know, they had to go in and take all of the goods, everything of value that was not nailed down, and so... Um, that's what I've Amen. And so here's, and here, so here's what's interesting. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it was interesting. Uh, Jehoshaphat and the nation of Judah, how many of you know Judah means praise? They had, come, they had come up against three nations who were trying to squelch out praise. And so it was like this demonic threefold attack that was trying to keep them from the place of praise. And Jehoshaphat, he had all these people run to him with a bad report. How many of you ever noticed, listen, there's, there's, there's never a shortage of people to tell you what's wrong. You ever notice that? 
And so all these people are like, oh my gosh, what are you going to do, you know? And he it said he feared and he set himself to seek the Lord. In other words, fear came to his heart, but he chose not to agree or to align with the fear that came into his house. Instead, he set a fast, he proclaimed a fast, and he said, listen, we're gonna begin to press in, we're gonna begin to contend, and they began to come together as families. And it talked about in verse 13, when they came together as families, fathers and mothers, daughters and sons, nursing infants and babes, it said the spirit of God spoke. And there's something about coming together as families that invites the spirit of revelation that brings breakthrough to come upon a people, place, and thing. And the spirit of the Lord spoke and he said, the battle's not yours, it's God's, but you still have a part and a portion, a piece to play in the battle. And the part and the portion you have to play is in your praise. And the part and the portion was to focus your eyes not on the attack that's coming against you, but the Lord is good. His mercy is his favor, his kindness, his grace, his blessing endures forever. And as they set themselves to praise in the face of their enemy, all of a sudden it says that their enemies begin to take out one another. Cancer began to take out poverty. Poverty began to take out divorce, so forth and so on. And so as, as the Lord began to start turning the hearts of the enemies upon each other, it says when Judah came to a certain place, and that means high praise, when Judah came to a certain place overlooking the valley of pillage and plunder, where, where, where all of these nations had, had hidden all of the possessions they had taken from families and nations in times past. It, just, it wasn't just what they were trying to get with Jehoshaphat, but they had a whole valley of booty. It was a booty valley. It was a pillage place. It was a plunder place. Amen. And so it says when Judah came to a certain place, all of a sudden the valley of plunder became the valley of blessing and it took them three days to gather the spoils, not just of what had been taken from them, but what had geographically been robbed of previous generations. And I believe that we are positioned as a people and as a house and as a family to take back what has been robbed in previous generations as praise, as, as, we, as we don't allow our eyes to be on what's against us, but we allow our eyes to be on the one who is for us and begin to recognize that he's more than enough. He holds the hearts of kings in his hand, just like he did with them. He can turn them like the river. He can turn the opposition that would come against you to take one another out to where, where there's been pillage, where there's been plunder, there would be blessing. But then it goes on to say that they gave them rest on all sides and their enemies, the, the, the report of what God did for Judah went throughout the land. And everybody said, you better not mess with praise. You better not mess with Judah. You better not mess with those guys because God comes down when they sing. And so Jill, why don't you just go ahead and pray out of the revelation that God gave you and then we'll, we'll look at John 14 briefly. Hallelujah. Father, we just um, say that your praise will ever be on our lips. Come on. We thank you, Lord, for the grace to endure. We say that we love the revelation of Jesus. And Father, we just... Thank you for the inheritance that is ours. Um, in this season, Lord, we say yes to everything of value that is not nailed down. We say that it is ours. We will take it. And um, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the revelation of it. And um, we receive it in the name of Jesus. We receive it over this house. We receive it over families, individuals, generations from past generations to come that are not yet here. Lord, we receive it for generations over this house, for families and for individuals. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask Jeff and Suze as, as the pillars of praise and the wells of worship to come on up here. And as they're coming up, um, I just want to say this over you. You know, the, when we talk about blessed and the Father's blessing, you know, there really is, there's something that we are created to receive from our Heavenly Father through our natural fathers. And sometimes when there's a gap in that place, the Lord will put almost like a conduit of grace into that place. And this house is meant to be a conduit of God's grace to where the Father heart and the spirit of adoption can be poured out upon people, places, and things, people, places, and possessions, and cities to where you can see an orphan planet receive the love of our Heavenly Father. Because one of the things you can always identify an orphan spirit because it tries to control its surroundings through manipulation in the fear of loss. And I believe that God is wanting to eradicate the orphan spirit through the spirit of adoption. And I believe there's a victory to be had in praise. And, and there's something of worship and intimacy that God is wanting to seal within our hearts. And the word blessed simply means empowered to prosper. One of the things we say around here is what you say is what you sow. So if you don't like your harvest, change your seed. If you will change what you are saying, you will change what you are seeing. 
what you speak to, you give life to. And see, that's what happened when Jehoshaphat had these people come to him. They were giving life to the attack and he had to give life to the victory. Amen. And so Pastor Jeff, Pastor Suze, whatever's in your heart. Yeah, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you have made this body a people of praise, God, Jesus. that we have seen your goodness, Lord, in the land of the Come living on. God. And Lord, we are, are here to proclaim yes. in this city, God, just how awesome our Father is, our, our Abba. Yeah. And God, I thank you, God, that you have given value to every voice in this house, Lord, that, that these people, God. There, it's not just a song that we see in, or words on a screen, God, but you have given each and every person a, a frequency, God, to be released, God, that brings forth your goodness, that brings forth light and darkness, that brings forth power, that brings forth healing, God, to those that are sick and deliverance for those that are oppressed, God. Lord, I thank you, God, right now for the shouts of victory Jesus. that will resound throughout the city of Birmingham, God, that will come forth out of this place, God. Come on. Lord, that you have have given us a, a, just a mantle and, and a on. mandate to worship, a yes. mantle and a mandate to worship, to release that sound. Mm. And Father, I thank you, God, for even the deeper realms that you're releasing even today, even as Suzanne mm. sang the prophetic song, that we yeah. would have an, an increase in the awareness of your nearness, of an awareness, mm. God, of what it means, Christ in us, the hope of glory, God, right now. And so, Lord, all over the house, Lord, awaken mm. the hearts of the sons and the daughters. Yes. Awaken the hearts to know the love of the Father for them and what you want to do, God, because of that love through them. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you that when and if our mother and father forsake us, that you take us up, God. Shumba. That our divine inheritance through your blood, Lord, that, that we would be able to manifest that in the earth, God. Mm. That we would bring your DNA to every circumstance, wherever we go, wherever our foot is treading, Lord. That we'd be taking ground for the kingdom, Lord. Through the power of our voice release that carries further than the eye can see, Lord. And the, the power of our footsteps. We thank you for that. That's who we are through you. <clears throat> um, also, I, I just felt to say this. That was, I, that was my prayer. But um, I was thinking about uh, this morning how... In Psalms 139, it says, you saw my substance, mm. and it was unperfect. Like, I, I think about, um, and I shared this with the women of, of, a few weeks ago, how sometimes when we look at people's life lived and what they, were, what they seem to have been handed with fathers or mothers or just life circumstances, we've done a lot of work with the, the poor and the prostitutes and homeless. And when you hear their story, you think, how could they ever make it? You know what I mean? Like it seems unfair, the life that some people have. And the Lord, I was sitting up pondering on this one night and I was, and I kind of got myself worked up and, <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, Lord, I just don't know if you're being fair. If, <laughs> you know, if everybody doesn't end up in heaven, to some people it just seems like they were just bound for hell. Like they, the, the odds were stacked against them and they, they might could have overcome, but they weren't going to overcome. And it was like, I got just myself frustrated with that. And I went to bed and I was just praying. I was like, Lord, give me a revelation. Cause I know this is not a right spirit and this is not truth that I'm chewing on here. <clears throat> and the Lord showed me, um, he showed me how he was looked into time and he beheld our substance in its unperfect state. And he saw like we're born once by the will of man. The scripture says like people came together and, and a person was made, but he saw us and he saw our substance and he saw our DNA and he saw all of our traits that we would have. He saw everything that life was going to hand us. And he loved us. He loved us. And then he breathed the spirit into us that would be able to overcome yes. everything that he saw was going to happen throughout time. So that there was, a, it was an even slate for everybody. That all the opportunities, people would come around you. That you would be built up in different ways. But the spirit that's within you is it's perfect. It came from God and it was everything that you would ever need. I just feel like somebody needed to hear that this morning, that, that it, it is, it's, it's not about fair, but it's even, he, he makes sure that we all have equal opportunity for the greatness that he, that he destined before the world began inside of us. No matter what life had for us, he made it possible, available yes. for you to live victoriously and to be an overcomer in this life. Amen. And I just speak right over, right Come over on. everybody right now, Come on. that that spirit that God breathed into you before you were born would just rise up within you, you know, would just root out everything 
from your physical DNA, from your history, from your hurts and your wounds, that all of that would just be gone. It would be overshadowed by the spirit of the holy, living, creative God that lives inside of you and that you would see yourself as his son and his daughter and that you would be an overcomer, that 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 within you that overcomes the world would just rise up and just root out everything else. You would see the truth that you were born for greatness, that everything that came through your family line died at the cross, was buried in your baptism. When you raised to new life, you don't even, you don't even have the DNA of your mother and father from the world. As wonderful as they may be or as awful, none of that. There's no curse, nothing. Who, whoever Amen. the Lord is blessed, no man can curse. Come There's on. no curse. We're not under Come the curse. Come on. I just bless everybody with that in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When Sue said DNA, I saw divine nature of Abba. Listen, regardless of your genetic code when you were born, when you're born again, you have the divine nature of Abba. Amen. And all week I've been hearing like this outward cry of inward heart saying, show us the father, show us the father. And that, and, and, and I, and I, I felt like a lot of it was what we're going to be doing this past Friday as we came and we just got to love on those amazing girls. And just to tell them that, listen, you're the guest of honor. We're here because of you. You're amazing. And uh, some of you may have not realized it yet, but you will tonight by the power of God. Amen. And, and just to see that, and, and, and so I kind of thought like that, that groaning, that cry was going to be answered that night, and I woke up Saturday, and I still heard it in my heart. And I was just reminded of the words of Philip in John chapter 14, when he said, show us the Father. And Jesus is like, Philip, have you been with me so long, and still you don't know? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And this is what it says in John 14, I'm just going to read just a few scriptures and we're going to land because I believe that we as a house, we as people, we as sons and daughters of God, how many of you believe that Jesus is our example? And if Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, that when people come in contact with us, they should come in contact with him. Amen? And so Jesus in John 14, verse 9, he says, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? Yet he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. I believe in me, but believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. And then of course it goes on to verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And you know, and when this, when the the gospel of John was originally penned, there was not chapter, there was not verse, there was no breaks. But somehow, a lot of times, we start messages or concepts or theories or thought At verse 12, if you believe on me and greater works, you know, if you believe on me and the works I did, these works and greater works you'll do. And we actually rob ourselves of the conduit of kingdom relationship and covenant promise whereby God works the greater works in and through us. It's by recognizing that if you've seen us, you've seen the Father. That it's not we who do the works, but it's the Father who does the works in and through us as we walk with the Son, empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit, and we continue to say yes each and every way each and every day. So what does it look like to reveal the heart of the Father to the world around us? I was thinking about this yesterday and and I said, God, I said, what is, you know, I wonder what it looked like, the heart of the Father. And then I just started thinking about, you know, blind blind Bartimaeus, you know? Jesus was walking down the road, just chilling. And you have this guy like, son of David, have mercy on me. And I began to think about, you know, what father who had it in his power to make his son see would not do everything he had to cause that son to see. And so when Jesus turned around and prayed for blind Bartimaeus, he was actually saying, listen, you're seeing the father. Literally, the blind man was about to see the father. And he came back and he prayed for him and he said, what do you see? He said, I see ministries. And Jesus said, good, but not good enough. And then he prayed again. 
which by the way, listen, that gives you permission to pray at least twice for anybody. <laughs> That's why I always like to say, okay, when I pray for healing, what are you feeling? And, and begin to recognize that healing is progressive and that a lot of times there can be instantaneous miracles. I'm thankful for that. I mean, we, we, we had so many miracles at the prison. We just prayed on mass, just started binding infirmity. And, I mean, people had floaters coming out, healing in their back. I mean, just all kinds of, where people just started shouting out things they were healed. Nobody laid hands on them. We just declared the gospel. And as the gospel went forth, power was released and it began to bring healing to their bodies. But they're all the time, we'll find people, well, you'll pray for them once, there's a change in their condition, you pray again. That's why it's called the working of miracles. That it's, it's something you partner with in the spirit. Another area where we, we see the father revealed is the woman who is caught in the adultery, right? They catch her in adultery, they throw her before Jesus and they did it one, to shame her, two, to test him. And as they try to shame her and test him, this is, this is what Jesus did for her and this is what Jesus does for you and he does for me. He, he, not only did he not agree with the accusation they had, although it was a valid accusation, he took the attention off of her and put it on him by leaning down and beginning to write in the dust. Now I've heard all kinds of sermons that he went down and, and wrote the name of the guy she was sleeping with and all the, I mean, all the kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> But I don't think Jesus would turn, like, flip the shame card, you know? <laughs> you know, I preach that sometimes. It was, it, it, I heard somebody else do it. It sounded good. I adopted it, you know? And now I've got a revelation. I don't think it was God. <laughs> Listen, you got to have humility to say, man, I believed it. I was an idiot. I'm sorry. I'll do, do, I'll be, I'll do better. Amen? When, you know, you got to have pastors who can admit they can blow it sometimes. <laughs> Revelation's progressive, you know? We're growing. We do the best we have with what we have to work with. And praise God, we have more tomorrow. Hallelujah. But this is what I believe Jesus did. Whether he went down and, and wrote a name, drew a line in the sand, whether he went down and just started, you know, just making sea stars or seashells or whatever he did. What he did was he took the attention of their accusation off of her and he put it on him. That's the father. The father takes the attention of accusation off of sons, off of daughters, whether they see themselves as an orphan or they see themselves as a son greatly loved by their father. And so I began to start thinking, I said, what, is, what, what else does it look like? To, to, if, we're, if we are called to reveal the heart of the father, what else is the heart of the father? And in Isaiah 61, Jesus, of course, in Luke 4, 18, stands up reading from Isaiah 61, and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That reveals the heart of the Father. And the gospel, listen, I love this. Our friend Dan Muller said this. The gospel does not expose your sin. It reveals your sonship. I think I paraphrased Dan's, but I like my version. In other words, the gospel doesn't, doesn't highlight the sin you're in. It actually removes the sin. And a lot of times the gospel that's been preached has been uh, just a need for a savior because people are poor, wretched, and blind instead of restoring creative value to a person, place, or thing. Amen. Jesus always came to restore how people saw what they saw, how they heard what they heard. So the gospel to the poor, the healing of brokenhearted, that reveals the heart of the father. When you find somebody that is walking through a place of brokenness in their heart, you, you don't just pat them on the back and give them some pat, pat, pat answer. You say, Lord, how can I bring healing to the brokenness in their heart? And all of a sudden God begins to give you words of knowledge, words of wisdom, things that would bring that balm of Gilead that Tina prayed to bring healing. Recovery of sight where there is blind the opening of prison doors, liberty to the captive, but also he, th this, this reveals the heart of the Father in Isaiah 61 that we would declare that this is the acceptable year of God's favor. That when he says, you've seen me, you've seen the Father, one of the things he stood up and said, guys, look, this is the year of seeing God's blessing in a way that you've never seen it before. And guess what? He was gonna say the same thing the next year and the next year and the next year because we have a glory to glory gospel. We have a faith to faith Jesus, amen? But honestly, one of, the, one of the, 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 the verses that I feel like most encapsulates the heart of the Father, I'm gonna, I'm gonna land with this. I have no time to get into all that we wanted to talk about this service, but we'll, we'll see about the 11. Because I believe that this, this, this whole time, honestly, has been encounters through, through worship, through the blessing, through hearing what God spoke to Jill, the prayers that Jeff and Suzanne prayed and released. How many of you are encouraged in your hearts? Amen. Listen, and when Jill said, listen, I woke up and heard this audibly. Hello, if God speaks to me audibly, I want you to get on the mic. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Valley of Butte. Hallelujah. Pillage and plunder. Amen. And so Luke 15, 20, I feel like that this embodies the heart of the Father. And guys, listen, if we are Kingsway Church, that cannot just be a name on the door. 
Amen? We actually, like the way of the king is the life that we're called to live. And so when we look at the way of the king, it's really embodied in Luke 15, 20, because kings in the kingdom don't look to rule and reign from the up down. They actually look to serve from the bottom up. Amen? I love what Bill Johnson used to say, that you rule with the heart of a servant, and you serve with the heart of a king. Amen? But Luke 15, 20, this is what it says. Speaking of, of the prodigal son returning to his prodigal father, or his father. It says, and he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, he, anybody know anybody that was a great way off? Man, they're way off. Amen? Don't get into judgment. When he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran, fell on his neck, kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf. Bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let's eat and be merry. I love that we serve a God that likes to barbecue. And, and, and don't, listen, the only thing that makes me more merry than meat is souls getting saved. And so if we can see souls saved and meat, hallelujah. I feel presence. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. And they began to be merry. And so, this is the father. Notice he didn't say, where were you? What did you do? What did you spend your inheritance on? I just said, man, I'm just so glad you're home. I love you. I miss you. The house wasn't the same without you. And we're going to see people this week who are way off. Some may not have turned yet but it's the goodness of God that leads them to repentance. And it's, this is what I loved even at the prison. I said, guys, we're not even gonna ask you to give your heart to Jesus until we see miracles happen in this place because we believe it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And we're gonna ask God for a demonstration of goodness. And so as we go forth this week and we hear the cry of our city saying, show us the Father, I want us to begin to pray and believe, not just for the goodness of God in our life, but for God to so radically wreck the lives around us with his goodness, for his glory, that they would turn. And even when they're a far way off, we would run after them to show them the compassion of Christ, to remove the label of what they've been called and what they've done in times past and put a new robe, in, and put a new robe on them, to take that signet ring that shows them their son and to put it on their finger and then take them out to lunch and tell them how amazing they are. It's time to be merry. It's time to eat meat. It's time to reveal the heart of our Father. Irondale is asking, Birmingham is asking, Alabama is asking, the United States of America needs our Father. We're acting, I mean, as a nation, there's such an orphan-like attitude right now to control, to manipulate, to maneuver. It's from the pit, but we don't have to give it a voice. We're called to be a voice of reformation. I wanna read one more statement as a blessing over you, and then we'll release you. And I borrowed this from the, the blessing that we got to release over land and Medores last week. Wasn't he amazing? Yeah. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Man, 
Man, I'm all ugly crying up here. Hallelujah. It's a good day. I bless your walk with Jesus to be one of nearness as you encounter the kindness of our King and the goodness of our God as a trusted friend and a beloved son who walks in the free access of intimacy and the recognized authority of your identity. If you're here this morning and you've never identified with being a son greatly loved by your father, you, you may be here this morning and maybe you came just to honor your natural father, to go to church with him, or maybe somebody brought you, or I don't know what brought you here this morning, but I know that Jesus said no one comes to him unless the father draws him. So I, I do know this, everyone here has been drawn by the father to the son to surrender and to worship. So if you're here this morning and you've never known what it was like to live as a son, greatly loved by your father, some of you may have lived as a, as, a, um, as a servant in the field. You felt like God was just a God who wanted you to work, 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 do, do, do. But I want to tell you, in Mark 1.11, there was a voice that came from heaven. And this was the voice. You are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus had not done a miracle. He hadn't taught a teaching. He hadn't done anything. He hadn't done anything that he had been anointed for yet. He just was. Jesus was blessed as a son based on his relationship with the Father, not as a servant based on his earthly accomplishments. And so if you've been trying to live by your efforts and not his affection, I wanna pray for you. But first I wanna pray for those who are here today and say, you know what? I'm feeling something today. I'm feeling the love of God in a way that I've not felt it before. And I... I've been living my life as a servant. I've been living my life on the outside looking in. Maybe like the prodigal, you've been away. You made some decisions that took you down a path that God never led you to go. But this morning you say, listen, I, I'm ready to turn and come home to my father. I'm ready for that barbecue in my honor. Fetch you on the count of three. I want you to raise your hand. I'm gonna pray for you. Jesus is gonna save you. Amen. And we're gonna embrace his grace, receive his mercy and be filled with his spirit to become the sons that we're called to be because the spirit of adoption is heavy in this house right now. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Amen. Anyone else? I know that's these two, these two brave gentlemen raised their hands before you even got to count. I like that. Hallelujah. Anyone else? If you're here this morning. Anyone else? Come on down. I wanna pray for you. Come on down. I wanna pray for you. I feel, like there's, I, feel like there's, I feel like there's more of you here though. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning and you've never identified with being a son greatly loved by your father, oh, you've never identified as a son greatly loved by your father. You always felt like there was more you needed to do, something else that could be done. You always saw yourself as less than and not more than. If that's you, I wanna pray for you because we're gonna break that thing off. If that's you, come on down. Is that you? Come on, come on. Anyone else? Come on, come on, let's thank the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. New birth. Hey, anyone else? I feel like there's, there's one more here. I felt like there was three more and then these two came down. Praise the Lord. I feel like there's one more person that is just battling with that thing. And here's, here's the thought in your mind. If I go down, what are they gonna say? I'll tell you what they're gonna say. They're gonna think you're a hero, you have great faith, and you have courage. Because we're not ruled by the fear of man. We worship by the fear of God. So there's one more person here, if that's you. There it is, come on, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, love you, buddy. Amen. Give me a hug, I'm a hugger. And I was hugging all the ladies at the prison on Friday, I didn't even know if we were allowed to. I just started coming up. I was like, come here. I love you. I'm so proud of you. Proud of you, brother. Too. You're a hugger too? Awesome. You're a good hugger. Hallelujah. Amen. I love you, buddy. I know. I know. Let's pray. Everybody stretch your hands out. You know, there's no accidents in God. Amen. And even as we have five 
who responded to the invitation of grace. (laughs) I just believe that grace is gonna do what only grace can do. Let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. And I thank you for making my heart your home. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and to be Lord over every area of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, let me ask you this. I know that we're, I know we're out of time, but we've got another service. And if you're here this morning and you want to be water baptized, if you want to be buried with Christ and raised in newness of life, if you want to bury that sinful servant nature and be resurrected in sonship today, we want to serve you in that way. And we can start the 11 o'clock. We, we, we've got shorts, we've got shirts, we've got towels, we've got everything you need to step out, get changed. The water is a nice 88 degrees, hallelujah. And we'll begin the worship at the 11 o'clock service. Do any of you want to get baptized today? Anybody? Anybody? You good? If you change, okay, awesome. Pastor Joe, come on. <laughs> Pastor Jody is going to help me baptize today. And, uh, and uh, anyone else here that just feels to be baptized, to be buried with Christ, to be raised in newness of life? Anyone else? Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord for who he is and what he's done. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me ask you to do this if you could. If you could go ahead and go get your children from King's Kids. We need to to relieve the nine o'clock workers and get the 11 o'clock workers in there and get everything cleaned out and turned over and switched out. We love you. We bless you. Have an amazing Father's Day. And uh, we also welcome you to our 11 o'clock service. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's have an amazing time in God.